very much. It is so good to be here today. This is the best day of the year. This is the day that those of us who work here at this college look forward to because this is why we do what we do. And it's such a privilege to be able to enjoy it with you in person. Good morning, graduates, family, friends, and colleagues. After missing our traditional commencement ceremonies for two years, 2020 and 2021, it is a true delight to be back in this honor grove to celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2022. And what a distinct privilege it is to share this day with you and celebrate the stories that you have written while you have been at College of the Canyons. Each one of you has a story one that is uniquely yours. You have written it as a result of your experiences, your challenges, your triumphs, the risks you've taken, your failures, your relationships, and the connections that you've made. It takes a lot of courage to walk into your own story and be the hero of your life, where you have to rescue yourself. And I'm sure you had to rescue yourself a lot during these last two and a half years. But you did just that. Well, at COC, your story has been fueled by your spirit, your courage, and most of all, by the choices that you have made each and every day. So before we talk about your story, what's the story of this class of 2022? You're the 53rd graduating class from College of the Canyons. It's one of the largest ever 2,443 students. Collectively, you've earned 3,637 degrees. That's right, a significant number of you have earned multiple degrees, in fact, 881 of you. So what else stands out about this class? Our youngest graduates are 17. One of our most seasoned graduates is 78, proving that you can achieve anything if you work hard, never give up, and have the courage to create your own story. The average age of this class is 24 years old. 48 members of the class are veterans. 1,027 of you are honors graduates, finishing with a GPA of 3.5 and higher. In a pandemic, that's like impossible. 119 graduates have earned a perfect 4.0 GPA, and the class GPA is 3.32. So yes, give yourself a hand. It's an amazing set of accomplishments. Each, you are a class of achievers, of dreamers, and of doers, and each of you has gotten here doing it in 2,443 different ways. While these numbers are really impressive in their own right, they're particularly noteworthy given the circumstances in which they were accomplished. You spent the last two years, or more, uh, but the last two, earning your degree and writing your story in the midst of a global pandemic, something the world hasn't seen in more than a century. Stop for a moment and think about what you experienced over the last two years, which was anything but normal. First, there was probably fear. We faced a new virus. We didn't understand what it was. We didn't know how it was transmitted. So we worried that we might get it, and some of us did. Second, there was uncertainty. We were supposed to be away from campus for two weeks. When the governor announced we were going to be locked down for two weeks, I sat at my dining room table and said, how am I going to do that, be locked down for two weeks? Well, 27 months later, here we finally are. Third, rapid unexpected change was all around us. Classes went from in-person to online in a matter of days, thanks to the work of the faculty and the support staff. And you students had to shift quickly to virtual classrooms held at your kitchen table in the bathroom or in your living room, wherever you could do that. Fourth, adversity moved into your house or your car or your apartment or wherever you were living. It was in your everyday life. And by the way, that was the new normal. 
People face difficult situations as many struggled to care for loved ones who were sick, while some grieved for those who left this world. People lost jobs, saw their hours cut, which led to a lot of anxiety about how to make ends meet. And fifth, and probably the most difficult, was you were isolated. Being forced to stay home meant you, meant you couldn't connect face to face with your teachers or your classmates, your coworkers, your friends, or your extended family. You sat by yourself, locked in, shut in, shut out, tied down. You probably were at times lonely, depressed, and sad. I know I was. Author William Languish said, so much of who we are is where we've been. What we go through has an impact on who we can become. Our experiences shape us and impact our lives, and your experiences have made your story. That's particularly true for the class of 2022. And that makes today your graduation especially meaningful and your stories deserving of the utmost recognition and respect. Because let's face it, learning was hard during the pandemic. It's not easy to focus on Zoom when you prefer to be in a classroom. You know you can't make eye contact on Zoom, I've tried. I've gotten right up to that camera, I've tried it with my phone, I've tried it almost standing on my head. It's impossible to make eye contact on Zoom. It's also kind of hard to study if you have loud, energetic family members, flaring TVs, barking dogs, and the constant temptation of gaming consoles, the refrigerator, your phone, and home comfort. It's hard to give your full attention to reading, writing papers, taking tests, when you're worried about how to make rent or buy food. So I want you to think about how many times you struggled with the thought that it would be easier to quit to put college on hold and come back to it later. But you know, easier isn't always better. I had the privilege of attending about two dozen special ceremonies these last three weeks. I brought my, my sashes over here, but I couldn't figure out how to put them on all at the same time. And I heard many of your stories of the amazing success. Two sisters who came from Vietnam six years ago, who spoke no English at all, learned how to speak English, got in line to be in our RN program, and are getting their degrees today, and are halfway towards their bachelor's degree at CSUN at the same time. The former aerospace manufacturer, yes, let's give them a hand. You all deserve a hand. The former aerospace manufacturing company owner who is getting his degree at age 72 after putting his three daughters through college when his business closed during the pandemic. He did not give up, he did not shut the door, he got back on the path. The international student from China who mastered English in one year, spent one year here and is transferring to UCLA in the fall. The young woman who lost both parents during the pandemic had a breakdown, had a baby, and yet made it through nursing school, a degree that was eight years in the making. The 36-year-old reentry student who decided to pursue the dream of being an engineer after he was laid off, became homeless, didn't give up, and went on to not only earn that degree here, but earn a $22,000 per year scholarship to support his last two years of his education. <laughs> the homeless youth who stopped going to school to care for her very ill mother. The homeless youth who stopped going to school to care for her very ill mother who had the courage to get back on life's paths and is here today. And by the way, she's also a state award-winning track athlete. And the ASG leader who thought he would never go to college, didn't think there was a place for him, but got involved in student government and is thriving at COC after overcoming a devastating family breakup, homelessness, and a break in his self-confidence. No one would have blamed any of you if you decided to hit pause during the pandemic. It would have been understandable to take some time off, or this phrase I don't quite get, take a gap year or two. Uh, we all know people who did that. 
after deciding to do so, that changed the ending to their story for the last two years, didn't it? They're not sitting here proud, resilient, accomplished, and hopeful about what the future will look like. For you sitting here, what sounded like pessimism, because you've obviously got grit and drive, was probably the beginning point of an amazing thought. Indeed, the moment you sensed the world wasn't aligned and was not going according to a predictable, expected, or easy planned way, you sensed at the time and started imagining and writing your alternative future. Behind every frustration and outrage, you saw a yes that pointed to the next chapter, the expectation of how you and this world could be. Thomas Edison said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. We're really glad he did because it took a thousand tries to invent the light bulb. So with the spirit and of perseverance, you kept writing your story. You didn't drop out or stop out. You made the other choice, the choice to keep going, to keep moving forward, even in the face of worry and doubt, sadness, fear, dress, distraction, and difficulty. The most important story you'll ever hear in your life is your own, not the one you read, but the one you write based on your daily choices. That choice to keep going had a profound impact on who you are today. By choosing to keep going, to persevere, you gained experiences that others have not obtained. You learned lessons that are only learned by living them. As John Legend said, experience is the best teacher. So what did you learn? So many things that are a part of you now, things that no one can take away from you, things that have prepared you in a unique way for the first generation ever to have that experience to build on as you go forward. You learned about resilience and how to bounce back and grow when things don't go your way. Even though things were difficult, we all, we all experience difficult every single day stress, setbacks, and even get emotional about it. But resilient people don't let those things overwhelm them. Instead, they ask for the help they need, they tap into their own strengths, they identify positive ways to overcome challenges. The fact that you're here today proves you are resilient and that you have the right stuff to generate the energy within you. By the way, it doesn't cost anything like gas. It's renewable energy every day when you get up and tell yourself what's ahead for you. You can give yourself hope to move forward and write new stories for yourself. You learn determination, your belief in your ability to become what you want to be, to never settle for less, and to not sacrifice your purpose in the face of difficult circumstances. In reaching and, and, and becoming resilient, you've proven that you have the determination to see things through and to complete. You learned resourcefulness. When things go sideways, we often get creative to stay on track. We find new ways of doing things. We put familiar objects to new uses. We learn to make the best out of whatever we have to work with. We're innovative and curious, and we learn we're more capable than we thought we were. Whether it was completing assignments in your car because our parking lots were your only reliable source of Wi-Fi, mastering new technology on the fly, or hustling to find a different job, you demonstrated that you were resourceful and succeed you did. You learned the power of choice as you repeatedly faced obstacles that stood between you and that chair today. Every decision you made to go online, to do that assignment, to try to get back in the swing of things and get that class done, made you. Instead of choosing to quit, you chose to hold on, hang in, and see it through. You chose to continue to write your story with the conclusion that you wanted it to achieve. In other words, you chose success. The power of choice is one of the most important things you learned at COC because it will impact your future more than anything else. We can't control whatever help happens out there. We've certainly learned that. But we can control our response. That choice is always yours, and nobody can take that away from you. When you realized that you 
could choose to write the story. I mean, we can all choose to write it. We can make it a Harlequin romance or a mystery or a drama or a soap opera or a comedy or a horror show or a gossip column or an adventure. And when you chose what your story was going to be, you had a clear purpose and it gave you the courage to keep moving forward. But also, probably the most important thing is you learn the power of connection. In a time of fear and uncertainty, when people were cut off from those they counted on the most to calm their fears and make them laugh and keep them steady, and as the stay-at-home orders extended far longer than anyone expected, our worlds grew smaller and smaller. We all started to miss being with others. While we spent a lot of time connecting digitally, and everybody did an amazing job here at COC of figuring out ways to let you connect digitally, to help you engage, to help you stay motivated, it's kind of still a poor substitute for face-to-face -face interaction. People really do need people. They need to hear them laugh. They need to see them smile. They need to feel the reassurance of a hug. We didn't know how much that mattered until suddenly it wasn't an option. When it comes to connection, you, it comes to the characters that you invite into your story. You have a choice with who to surround yourself with. When you choose people who build you up, who encourage you, who believe in you, even when you're not sure about believing in yourself, you have the best cast of characters. We need each other to learn and stretch. We need the wisdom and counsel of those who've gone before us. And we need the perspectives and energy of those who have different experiences and backgrounds from us. Let's face it, when the times get hard, who wants to go it alone? It's easier to have somebody to talk to, to walk alongside us, to remind us how far we've come, and to encourage us to keep going and to reignite that passion.